Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to possibly the shortest video lesson you're ever going to have during this flipped classroom experience. Up on the screen, you'll see the exit question. Fill it out in the form later. Today, we're going to talk about the converse to the Pythagorean theorem. And the converse, just like any other converse, is just the theorem stated in reverse. The Pythagorean theorem says that if you have a right triangle, then the sum of the squares of the two legs is equal to the hypotenuse squared, or a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The converse says just the opposite. If you are given three lengths of a triangle and you plug them into the Pythagorean theorem formula itself, or the equation itself, and find that equation to be true, then that proves that those three lengths make up a right triangle. Now, you've probably done this a million times already in your math career. But I'm just stating this again. It's officially a theorem now that you can use, theorem 7.2. There are, however, two smaller theorems that are based off of this idea. I would almost call them a corollary, corollary to the Pythagorean theorem, but they're slightly more meaningful than a corollary. So here they are, theorem 7.3 and 7.4. And basically what it says is if you have a obtuse angle, uh, then c squared is going to be bigger than the sum of the squared of the legs of the hopefully right triangle. But if you find c squared to be larger than the other ter two terms added together, then it will be classified as an obtuse triangle. And if you find that c squared is less than the sum of the other two sides squared, then that triangle will be acute. Now, a couple things to remember is that a triangle is always classified by its largest angle. So that means that uh, these classifications that come along, acute and obtuse, don't mean that all angles in the triangle are acute, which is possible, or that all angles in the triangle are obtuse. That's impossible. But it means that the largest angle is still acute or the largest angle is still obtuse. The second thing to remember when using these two theorems is that you still want to arrange, plug in the numbers into the inequality in this case, such that the longest side is substituted in for c squared. Because you're thinking, basically just go through it and assume that it is a right triangle. So throw the longest side into c squared. And if you find the equation in theorem 7.2 not to be true, then it's not a right triangle, and then make a determination whether it's less than or greater than the sum of the other two sides squared. Um, if you do that, as long as you put the longest side into c squared, you should be fine. Let's do an example. Here's our example. I have two questions for you uh, that have to do with a 3, 4, 6 triangle. Now, my first question is, can a 3, 4, 6 triangle even exist? And if it can, please classify it as acute, obtuse, or a right triangle. Now, after yesterday's lesson, you should be aware of the 3, 4, 5 right triangle. And this is so close to it, but slightly off. You're probably already saying, well, it's probably a triangle, but probably not a right triangle because I know a 3, 4, 5 is a right triangle. So um, what I'd like you to do first is recall a theorem called the triangle inequality theorem. And there were three inequalities that you can write based on those side lengths right there. I want you to pause the video and see if you can still write those three inequalities that have to do with the sum of two sides versus the third. There are three inequalities that you should be able to write given that information. OK, the three inequalities are basically the sum of the two sides are greater than the third in any combination. So 3 plus 4 is greater than 6, 3 plus 6 is greater than 4, and 4 plus 6 is greater than 3. Now, in this case, after I've written these, uh, I'm going to make sure that each one of these is true to make sure that my inequality holds. In fact, maybe there should even be a question mark above that inequality before I know that it's true. But in any case, these three inequalities are true. That means a 3, 4, or 6 triangle could exist. And now all I have to do is classify it according to uh, one of our theorems today, whether it's right triangle, acute, or obtuse. So the next step then is to identify the longest side. 
six and then substitute it in for c in the a squared plus b squared equals c squared equation. If you do that, you get something like that, and you just have to figure out what symbol goes there, an equal sign, a greater than symbol, or a less than symbol. If you do that, you get 36 on one side, 25 on the other. Obviously, 36 is larger. So in this case, we have 36 is larger than the sum of the two legs squared. So therefore, the hypotenuse is bigger, and therefore, this triangle will be obtuse. There are another, if, if we had gotten the other way around, then it would be acute. And if we had gotten equal, it would be a right triangle. It's as simple as that, folks. Your assignment's up at the top of the screen. And take the exit quiz, and you're all done. I will see you next time.